Um, hello. <laughs> and welcome back to the Paper Soprano podcast. I am your host. My name is Heidi. And... <laughs> And yeah, you guys, we don't we don't have anything going on today other than a good old fashioned chat. Okay, I've got myself a beverage. I wish it was colder. Not outside. I wish the beverage was colder. But you know, we're living and we're learning. Um, the beverage is was a gift from. Um, it was a a New Year's gift. It is a nice. Italian Pinot Grigio. Mm-hmm. Yes, of course. Um, not usually a huge fan of Pinots, but this one's pretty good, you know? <laughs> um, yeah, so anyway, today was the first day back. First day back of at work um, in a while for me, a couple of weeks. I've been working from home and first day back in the office after so many days it's always a little bit weird but I was weirdly like invigorated you know what I mean sometimes just a a change of scenery is enough to make me like super excited and and not even excited I was just kind of like honestly a little bit manic which is one of my flying colors (laughs) it's just how it is and it was it was a pretty productive day, I would say. I've still got a couple things to do. If you are listening to this podcast and I still have not gotten back to you about when we are going to have you on the podcast, there's there's been an influx of people who want to be on the podcast and I'm super excited about that. I just have to try and nail down everybody's schedules and blah, blah, blah. And then... We've just got a bunch of chats on the horizon, you guys. Tons of chats. So many amazing hours of listening to people chatting about things that they like. We love it. So, speaking of things that we like, today there was an unexpected little nice thing that happened. And one of my good friends, Kat, she suggested that we do like a zoom practice room kind of deal and basically the whole concept is just that you sit in a zoom room and you go on mute and you practice and you have like a cohort of people who are like in air quotes who are there but they're not really like talking to you or whatever and honestly oh I just I love that you know I love that sense of you know, we're all doing something at the same time together. <laughs> like we're all, we're all getting things done, and and it's kind of an accountability thing too, because you can't just like stop and, I mean, you can, but there's also some people on the other side of of your screen who are, you know, getting it done, and it's like inspiring to have other people around you who are practicing, and you're all just doing your work together. I don't know. Is this weird? I feel like people do this. Kat had mentioned that there's some people at Stony Brook who who do this already, like the string studio. I don't know. But anyway, I think that's really cool. And we, we um, engaged in that and we widened the net to include some of our friends next time. And I think that's going to be really fun. Um... Yeah, and I honestly, I didn't even really practice singing. I did like a warm up at the end, but for the first large section, I was I was hoping to do like half and half, but for the first half, which turned into more, I was really practicing um, my gitalele. And if you do not know what a gitalele is, it is a guitar hybrid ukulele instrument. And it's pretty neat. It's a neat little instrument and it's nice and small and easy to navigate. I am a relatively small person and I have small hands. And honestly, when I play my my guitar, which I also have a guitar, when I do play, I play on a three-quarter size guitar. So <laughs> I just, half of it is because I, I like the size of it and I like the smaller 
guitar, uh, basically the neck, you know, the body's a little bit smaller, but, um, the neck is smaller and I, I like that for my hand placement. The fingerboard is smaller. And, um, I think it's also because when I was younger, my parents just, you know, they got me that one guitar and I was like, cool. So this is the one, like, this is it. I, you know, I've got it now. I've got the one, I've got the instrument. I've, I've, I've gotten it. And I don't think they had any concept of, like, getting another one or, you know, I, I became less interested in it or or just kind of complacent with the one that I had. There were no problems with the instrument that I had. It was a, it was a good, solid first guitar, and it has still been my only guitar <laughs> that I have ever owned. And I'm, I'm fine with that, you know? I have no problems keeping that guitar. I think it's a cute little instrument. I'm not a guitar player by any means. I pretty much just play open chords and I can, you know, read tabs and stuff. But other than that, I took lessons for like, what, two years? You know, I am not a guitar player. I just kind of know how to fake it and badly, you know. <laughs> so, you know, my little three quarter size guitar from when I was 11 totally does the trick. And now I have this other um, Gitalele instrument as well, which I have been a little reluctant to play, but here I am playing it, and I've been I've been just a fan of warming up vocally with like really light and gentle like stretching, basically like stretching the voice in like a in a pop way, you know, like I sing through some tunes that I like, or I sing a couple songs that I, um, have heard on the radio and like, I sing them in a, in a really like non-committal way. I'm not trying to move any mountains here, but I'm also not trying to like sing it in an operatic way or sing it in a super stylized pop way either. I'm really using it as just kind of like a, like exactly what I just explained, like a non-committal, neutral, way of singing. You know what I mean? It, it's it's interesting and I, I encourage people to change your warm-ups from time to time because that has really helped me to like freshen things up. I, I do a lot of teaching and a lot of the times I get stuck in a, a rut about warm-ups and I just kind of because you know for younger students like the students that I have or newer students I want them to be doing the same exact thing in their warm-ups. You know, I want them to be exactly how I how I explain it to them. I want them to start with the body. I want them to move to breath. And then I want them to start with the voice. And I have like a pretty prescribed set of exercises that we do every lesson, which is, you know, it is just kind of how it goes, you know? And I, I want that for them because when you're starting out, you need that kind of structure to ingrain it in you but me as a person and me as a musician it's it's not tiresome to do those things because I do like it and I like the the I guess the consistency of that but at times I feel like I just need to be a little bit more exploratory and playful in my practice you know what I mean because sometimes it just becomes such a a brutality to your emotions and your mental state and you're like oh my god and and you and when you do the same thing every single day you really see the differences in your voice from day to day like if you're singing and you're just not in great voice that day you're like oh my god I do these every day like why can't I sing this right now like what the heck you know whereas if I take out my guitar or my guitalele and I sit you know sit in my chair and I warm up with a couple tunes where I'm just lightly singing and then I move into that warm up. You know what I mean? I just do that before. I don't like cancel out the regular warm up that I do, but I just do it beforehand and and allow for that that childlike playfulness to come through within my music. It's like yeah, that's that's refreshing. Speaking of refreshing, <laughs> I'm going to take a sip. <laughs> ah, yes love it. Pinot Grigio kind of tastes like fish to me. Is that, am I the only one? 
you know? Like, it kind of just tastes like... I don't know. It just kind of tastes like fish. And coming from someone who hasn't eaten fish in, like, six years, seven years, it just still kind of does. You know? I don't know why. It has a very ocean flavor. <laughs> like, notes of aquatic life. <laughs> oh, God. Anyway. Um... What else did I do today? Oh, oh my god. I got something off of Facebook Marketplace, which was really fun. It's a... I'm trying to downsize this large shelf that I have in my apartment. And I, I love the shelf itself. I think it's nice. I think it's sturdy and whatever. But I just want to have a smaller one. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm really in like full-on purge mode. I'm trying to get rid of things. I'm trying to create more open space in my little neck of the woods here. I'm trying to get rid of things that are just kind of in the way and not really serving a purpose. So that is one of them. And as much as I like the setup that I have right now, I think that a change will be good and welcome. You know what I mean? And it is because I got this little collapsible shelf that's going to be way easier to easier to move when I evidently have to move out of this apartment and way easier to just to transport and to set up in a new place it's going to be smaller and it's it's better it's one of those corner shelves you know what I mean like fits right into a corner ah whoever invented those 10 out of 10 idea just absolutely love it so that's something that I did today we love that also, speaking of change, people, the time, the time has come for a large change within the appearance department of my life. I am planning on, I have an appointment tomorrow, I'm planning on going to the hair salon tomorrow, people, and there is going to be a change in my appearance. And if any of you know me, you know that I have been cutting my own hair for oof, probably like at least four years. I have not been to a hair salon in many, many, many years. <laughs> I just don't even remember the last time I went to one. And I have never dyed my hair in, in a way. Although I will sidetrack, I have had my hair dyed almost like against my will. I don't even remember really asking for this. But <laughs> um, okay, so a quick side story on that. But I was in middle school and I was sleeping over at one of my friend's houses and we were friends. But you know, you know how in middle school, like, um, you have those friends who are like kind of your friends, but they're also not that nice to you. And, you know, they're like your friends in quotes but like they're also you know kind of mean to you maybe that was just because I was bullied in middle school but I don't know so um I went over to one of my friend's houses for a sleepover and I guess her mom was a hairdresser or somebody in her family was a hairdresser I don't even remember who it was but I ended up getting like just streaky big block um highlights in my hair that night like just big old chunky 2007 highlights and it was crazy and I remember being like oh yeah okay cool we've got some highlights and um at that point like I wasn't even allowed to have the very the very trendy side bang that all of my other friends were having and like they were able to cut their hair and my cousin like cut her hair all the time and you know she did all these crazy things to her hair and I was like why can't I do crazy things to my hair but my mom just did not let us like me and my sisters both we just were all not allowed to do anything crazy to our hair and she hated the whole like side bang thing because like it covered one of your eyes and like I was like, mom, you don't understand. I'm trying to be like an emo kid right now. Like, this is my, this is my expression. Um, but we weren't allowed to do that. We weren't allowed to have anything crazy done to our hair. And then knowing that, you can imagine the, <laughs> the sheer horror and just boiling rage that occurred after my mom picked me up the next morning when she saw that I had 
literal like bleached highlights in my dark brown hair and of course like nobody consulted her asked her if that was okay and you know I was a kid I was like a child obviously I think I was in like either sixth or seventh grade so yeah that was really funny and I remember having them and being like oh my god these look so good I'm killing it I'm amazing and and now I look back at my Ooh, my middle school school pictures with the braces and like back then, like the poof in the front of the hair, like you would clip your hair up and you'd like tease the front. So there'd be like a little puff in the front that in tandem with the big block highlights in tandem with like, you know, an Aeropostel shirt with like a white lace cami underneath it. Girl, ooh, we were not killing it. And like bottom eyeliner in your waterline. Ooh, yeah. Those were some times. Those were some questionable times. And then, you know, after that, your hair just doesn't, like, go back to normal. It just grows out. So, like, the part that you changed just starts growing out. And I had those those highlights right up against my roots. So after, like, a couple of months, I had these, like, super dark roots growing in. And, like, crazy highlights that were just, like, basically starting from my ears and going down all my hair. And then at that time, my mom was like, listen, we've got to do something about this hair. You look ridiculous. we we got to do something. So at that point, I dyed my hair black. And that was an interesting time as well. We almost, like, loved it in a way. I, I didn't mind having really dark hair. But it was to cover up the highlights. And then after that, I have never dyed my hair since. So long story short, too long didn't read. Um, We're going to change that tomorrow because I'm in charge. Okay, I'm in charge here and I get to pick what goes on to my hair. And I say that needs to happen tomorrow. And I'm going to be all socially distanced. I asked on the phone, I'm like, what's your guys' COVID protocol? Like, blah, blah, blah. And she was really reassuring and told me all the things that she, like, that they do and blah, blah, blah. They have, like, limited numbers. They all wear masks. We were, like, the client wears masks as well. And it seemed very, very credible. It's like a salon. And yes, I was appalled at the price of the things that I was seeing on this like hair salon list but I also was told by people close to me that those are normal prices for things and I was like hmm okay sure (laughs) I just have never had to budget those things into my life so we'll see how it goes and I'm excited but also pretty nervous I've never you know I've never really put my hands in put my hair in somebody else's hands, I should say, but it's, it's time. And while I am nervous to relinquish control, I think that it will benefit me in the end. You guys, we just got to let go of stuff and hope for the best. And also it's just hair. So it'll figure itself out. And we're not in, I'm not really seeing anybody these days. So hopefully if it's not good, it won't be too big, too big of a deal. Ah, we love a good sip. So, oh man. Also, if you, um, if you're listening to this and it's still the 4th of January and you are a singer, I applied to a young artist program today called, um, Finger Lakes Opera. And if you are interested, the application fee was only five bucks. They're a, um, really nice program from what I can see from their their website and their Instagram page and all of their stuff and I had a few friends who went there my friend Juliana I also know um, my friend Stephanie who went there and they put on some really good things so if it's still the fourth for you today's the deadline (laughs) so if you listen to this before midnight tonight you can apply to this program and yeah I, I'm always I'm always trying to find those programs that are and this is a this is a paid program so if you're looking for you know payment as we all are 
you should look into this program. It, they travel your or they cover your travel fees. They cover your housing like they pay you. It's like a real, real deal. I'm always looking for programs who are legit about their application fees. That's such a huge deal to me. And I know that some of these companies are so old and like, you know, there's no stopping them really when you're looking at their program. And of course, they're going to ask you for like $75 for an application fee or like $100 or sometimes even like $150 application fee. You know what I mean? Like the fact that this program charged $5 for an application fee was like the best green flag I could have like green light you know what I mean I was like yes I'm gonna apply to your program and I think that needs to be more talked about and I think it is sort of but mostly just talked about by like the people who are affected by it financially you know they should monetize or they should advertise this type of application fee I don't know you know what I mean like I just think it should be more talked about the fact that there are some good programs out there who are trying to recruit singers and they have really affordable application fees like it's just it's such a huge thing because when you're a young singer and you're trying to apply to all these stupid expensive programs before you can even get out of the gate like this isn't too get into the program or this isn't to lock down and secure an audition this is literally just to send your application in and if you happen to get you know callbacks basically you get like a call or an email to come and have an audition then it's like okay great start shelling out the cash dude you've got to get a plane ticket you've got a reserve a hotel you've got to be there for a certain number of days you've got to you know have food and other travel expenses and then you got to go back to your home or wherever you're living it's just like oh and the time like you got to take off work for these things you got to take off your your muggle jobs to, to try and have an audition for your for your music stuff and it's just I don't know. It's it. Everybody who I've ever talked to about this is like, yeah, dude, it's criminal. And then we all just keep doing it. You know, we all just keep paying these application fees. And I, I get it. You know, I get it. Bureaucracy and all of these things are, are alive and well. And there's people who got to get paid to look at these applications. And there's people who've got to get paid for this and blah, blah, blah. But damn, dude, you know, you don't think you could try and budget that in from your artist funds or things that, you know, you have these grants for or all of these things that are financially coming in. You really have to wring out your application pool. Oh, it's just, it's so sad to see, really. Oh my God. And I think that's honestly, I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep it a little short today. Because I don't have anything necessarily too groundbreaking to talk to you about, but I'm sure tomorrow I will have many a story for you. And I was thinking tomorrow I might also give you guys a little um, story time about my um, car life. What I've been experiencing in my life with cars and my first car and not this one that I have because this one is amazing and I love it so much. But my other car and how those experiences have shaped me as a person. So maybe we'll get into that tomorrow. Maybe we won't. We definitely, as soon as I get off of this podcast, I'm going to start um, messaging all of the people who have asked me to be on the podcast. So know that if you are listening to this right now and you have asked me and I still have not contacted you, I am getting to you, girl. Don't be sad. Okay? <laughs> Do not fret. I'm coming for you, girl, okay? I'll get there. And we'll get you on the pod. And that's going to be it for today, you guys. That is going to be about it. This has been the Paper Soprano podcast. If you like this podcast and you feel compelled to support it in some way, go ahead and do it. Just leave yourself a like. Leave a comment. Tell me something about your life. I don't care. Or don't. I also don't really care. <laughs> 
Subscribe to the channel if you want, if you want to see the daily podcast that I post every day and you want to listen to it, feel free. And yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Thank you guys so much for listening. I really do appreciate it and I have a lot of fun doing this. I think that in a way this has been a a very cathartic time for me and myself and I to just sit down and talk. It's like I've said this in a couple other podcasts, but it it's like a little verbal journal for me. And the fact that I post it makes me have to do it. It like keeps me accountable in a way. The fact that I post it, I'm not posting this for fame or money or fortune because who would give me any of that for the stuff that I'm posting? <laughs> I'm not looking for that. I'm really just looking for this to be a an experience, you know, and I'm here to create stuff and this is what's, this is what's coming out. So hope you like it. (laughs) And yeah, I hope you have a great morning, afternoon, evening, night, whenever you're listening to this. If it's still the fourth and you want to audition for, or you want to apply to that young artist program, it's Finger Lakes Opera. Go ahead and do that before midnight. But if it's after that, which it probably will be when you listen to this, don't worry about that. (laughs) Okay, you guys, I never know how to end these podcasts, so I thank you for being here, and I will talk to you tomorrow. Okay, love you, mean it. Bye!